In the summer of 2003, the popular video game studio, Valve, was hacked by Axel Gemba. The source code to their upcoming game, Half-Life 2, was stolen and released onto the internet. In October, Valve's CEO, Gabe Newell, made the hack public. Half-Life 2 would be delayed or even cancelled as a result. He asked the community for help to find this hacker. James Watt and Derek Austill started a website to do just that. Their site later gained the attention of Valve and the FBI. Within 11 days of Gabe's post, they had successfully identified Axel's screen name, Ago, as the hacker. Axel was later arrested on May 7, 2004. While he was the only one to be arrested, it remains a mystery if there were others with access to Valve's network. During my interview with Axel in 2016, he maintained that he was not the one who uploaded the files to the internet. In this interview, James Watt tells his story about the theft of Half-Life 2. It's hard to remember specifically... Um you know, what had gone through my, my head, but I, I do remember uh, feeling like we were never going to get the game and that if we caught the hacker, we'd get the game. I remember that was my, the way I felt about it. I don't know if that was what actually transpired, but that's how, what I remember feeling. Just to put you in my perspective, I was like 16 years old in October of 2003. Uh, to give you some background, I grew up in a quiet suburban town. There's very little crime here. I mean, people in, in my town, they still kept their keys in the visor of their car. They still left their front doors unlocked. I was wholly unprepared uh, for this whole, this whole situation. And I learned something from it, which is no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> you know, I, he asked for help from the community, and I, uh, I wanted to help. And by doing so, I actually became a, a um, I don't want to say victim, I actually became a... Um, I actually became a suspect. That's the word I'm looking for. Sorry. It was it was like a frenzy. It was like it was like a hive mind frenzy of everybody uh, jumping up and down that we had to do this. Uh, you can imagine the way that 16 year old gamers type on the internet, you know, in all caps and with badly spelled words. And that was part of what created this because we would just go onto the forums and we would post, "Hey, we set up a website for information about the leak." And so then everybody would go from the forums, they'd click on the link and they'd go to the website and then they would just sit there and refresh our page looking for updates. It was like the, it was like the drudge report <laughs> of the, of the Half-Life hack. So I'd say the community was wound up <laughs> to say the least. And that's the whole reason that we got so much exposure to our, to our page. At one point we had 50,000, 50,000 views a minute to our page, which is pretty incredible, right? <laughs> At the gateway.net slash HL2 or gtwi.net slash HL2. It was definitely that second one. That That's where it was up until maybe the last six weeks or, or three weeks. It was We were getting so many views that it was like the website was being uh, denial of service attacked. So I couldn't keep the website up. So I actually it actually was down for a couple of weeks. And this guy said, I have... DOSS protection, we can, or sorry, DDOS protection. I have uh, more bandwidth than you can imagine. So it was only the Half-Life 2 Arena at the very, very end. So being that I was 16, <laughs> um, but we, did, we, did, we didn't have a lot of money to buy um, movies or games or whatever. So at that point in my life, we would go on to different war sites and IRC and Usenet, and we would download stuff and if we really liked it you know I'd get my, my parents to spend the money to buy it so we, we knew a couple outlets to go to find stuff if you were trying to download it and didn't want to pay for it so the first thing we did is we just tried to get, go to those resources that we knew about and find if anybody had posted the game and we found a couple hits but the earliest one we could find the one that seemed to predate everybody else was on Usenet so the first time we found it on anything was a uh, a Usenet post, and I can't remember the, the name of the person on Usenet. It might be in that archive site that I sent you. But we originally targeted him thinking, well, he's the first person to put it online. He either has to know somebody or it has to be him. So we kind of put him on blast, which I guess today you'd consider that to be doxing. And, you know, it's not so good to do. But back then, it wasn't even a term. And, um, you know, he came out and claimed that he got it somewhere else and that he had nothing to do with it. I don't know if that if anything became of that, I don't know if the um, if the FBI or, or, or any police department questioned him and got valuable information. Nobody ever followed up and told us if they did. Um, but he, the guy who did it, he used the same username on Usenet. 
as he used on his, I want to say, EverQuest clan. It was some kind of RPG clan, and they had their clan published on the internet somewhere. So when we Googled his using that username, we found his clan username, and he had his phone number on his clan page. <laughs> so it was it was very easy to get from uh, to, to connect the dots on that one. We used AOL in some messenger and we used uh, email to get tips. And when I would come back from school, I would have so many AOL messages. I would have over a thousand windows open on my screen. Sometimes the computer would just be completely locked up. I had, I had like the first girl I was ever dating. Uh, she came over to my house and she was sitting there and the computer, and every like 10 seconds, a new window would pop up a new, and she's like, what the hell's wrong with you? What are you doing that? It's like, she couldn't believe or understand why all these people would be sending IMs to me. And you know the noise it would make. And it was like a machine gun going off. <laughs> I actually had to turn the speakers off on the computer or, or mute them. I think I just muted the sound inside AIM. And most of the messages we would just close because they would just be random people saying hi or saying, hey, I saw your name or or some silly thing that, it, you know, something about your mother because, you know, the way gamers talk to each other. <laughs> Every now and then, though, you'd actually have a legitimate tip. One individual in particular that's kind of sat in the back of my mind for, for years. So I get an IM from a guy named XF Good Guy. Now, I don't remember why I ended up communicating with him because, again, so many people are sending us messages. But with this particular individual, I actually added him to our list. He might have given me some tips or a log or something. I don't remember what. He would always try to um, ask in interesting questions of me. And one of the questions he asked one time is he asked what kind of gaming computer I had. And I went through and told him all the specs. <laughs> and after I told him everything, he said, okay, well, I've just, uh, now I know exactly what your hardware fingerprint or hardware signature is. You've just confirmed it for me. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, if, if you're a hacker, if you were a hacker and somebody asked you that, you've just confirmed all of your, all of the things that we would need to know to, in order to go after you for your, like he's talking like he's, a police officer but he wasn't or he said he wasn't but he's talking like he like almost like he was trying to warn me or teach me hey this is this method that they use to get people and it was all, of course after i had already divulged everything that was in my computer so maybe he already had the info so he felt like telling me that but he had me look at a website it was lindos.com, which was a Linux Windows that eventually had to change their name because of a Microsoft lawsuit. But there was a website, lindos.com. And he had me look at it. He said, I want you to refresh the page. I'm refreshing the page. He said, okay, now look, look down near the footer of the page. There's a picture of something or other. Do you see that picture? I said, yeah. He's like, okay, refresh the page again. I refreshed the page again. The picture turned to some funny picture. I don't know what the funny picture was, but they changed it. So he... Either he or somebody that he was working with defaced lindos.com. And he was asking me if I could show him something. And I said, well, I don't, I'm not hacked into any websites. I can't show you anything like that. I was like, I can change something on my own website. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, you got to have something out there. You got to have a website that you have, you know, root, root permissions on. You can go in and change something. I'm like, no, I, I'm legitimately not uh, a hacker. <laughs> So again, I don't I don't know what his motivation was. I don't know if he was a hacker trying to meet another hacker. I don't know if he was a FBI agent trying to uh, get information on me. And I'm sure it's a handle he used one time. He'll never use it again. It's gone forever. But I've been kind of like looking for him to ever bring, come back up and, and reappear. It would just be interesting to, to get closure on that because I've always wondered who I was talking to. The thing that was odd was, was him trying to get me to deface a website. That was the, um, you know... Yeah. Yeah. To see, to see if I could, you know, see if I was truly, and again, that could just be a, a rite of passage for hackers or that could be, or that could have been an, uh, an FBI agent or something trying to get me to mess up. They had been emailing me the whole time, but not um, admitting they were the FBI when they were emailing me. They were kind of doing it incognito. And Gabe had apparently emailed me a couple times, same thing. I didn't know it was him, but he was incognito. They were kind of fishing for information and I was just answering all, you know, they'd write questions. I'd answer a bunch of questions and didn't think much of it, but really they were building a case. <laughs> so I come home one day, uh, I don't know if it was from school or what it was, but I come home and my mother's like losing it, completely losing it. The FBI never directly contacted me, but they did apparently talk to my mother who otherwise would have had no idea about this whole, this whole thing. 
and she told me that I needed to write an apology letter. And if I wrote an apology letter, they were not going to punish me because I was like 16 years old. And I'm like, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> so why would I write an apology letter? So she, she's losing it. She almost forced me to write an apology letter for something I didn't do. Um, for, fortunately, she didn't. But they never actually came and questioned me directly. They, they, they did contact my mother. Um, I have an uncle in law enforcement. And apparently he, they had actually contacted him as well to ask him if he could talk to me or find out more details. And he did talk to me. And that's whenever my mother stopped bothering me about the letter. So that was the only time that Gabe contacted me. And I didn't know that he contacted me, but he did. He sent me an email and he asked me to remove it all. So I knew it was somebody at Valve, but I didn't know it was him. When I got confirmation, finally, many years later, that it was him, was on the Reddit AMA, whenever I had the top voted comment on there, and he said back to me in his message, I'm the one that told you, in e you know, via email uh, to remove that stuff. Don't you remember that? And I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but that's about what he said. That's why I removed it. I, I don't think they ever truly understood my motivation. So it was very nice whenever he replied to that and acknowledged that you know, they knew I was just trying to do a good deed, and he didn't invite me to come meet them at um, at their office, which is what I was really hoping for from the AMA. I thought, hey, maybe, you know, after all this time, maybe they'd, they'll invite me in to, to meet them, but that's okay. <laughs> I can tell you that when it went on from like October until even the spring, early spring, um, what, what I don't know what the final date is, what the date is that I posted that. I think it was called the final log or, or no, it's called another log, another log.txt. Nobody really got the game to work right. I mean, you, a couple people got it to start and you could walk around a little bit, but nobody really got it to work correctly during that time. People eventually did, but um, there was a lot of hoaxes where people were making videos of it working, <laughs> but they were um, they were just hoaxes. Uh, we, I did download it just to see what the heck was in it. Um, I did like a virus scan on it, see if we could find anything like that. I never tried to compile it. I never tried. I never downloaded a copy that worked or anything. But I did download the listing of all the files to look at. I never uploaded it to anybody. I never shared it with anybody. But I, I downloaded it and looked at it. Towards the end, we started getting a lot of false leads. I don't know if that was the actual hacker trying to throw us off the trail. We we do know for sure that there was a uh, a cheating group. They would create cheats for online games. They were giving us false leads because they were trying to get publicity for their cheats so that people buy their cheats for valve games and so we we got kind of got stuck on that for a couple weeks and by the end i was done with it because i having you know having them become the um a suspect <laughs> i was kind of perturbed at the whole thing i always thought that even though i always thought my god was a red herring i always thought that they like like in hindsight many years later i just thought that they were just trying to because they sold hacks or something for valve games but i i always thought they were trying to um, just get free publicity because I never found any um, even that that final that other log than another log it, it didn't um, I mean I, I sat in like an IRC channel for like two months with uh, my gut trying to see if they'd say anything and by the end of it I just I was so I just thought that they were wasting my time I don't maybe 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 they they were involved but um, uh, I felt like all the publicity I had attracted and all the views we were getting on the website I felt like they used it I felt like I got used for them. Does that make sense? One of the people that we put on blast on the, the page, and I don't remember which one it was, if it was the guy from Usenet or somebody else, he had looked up my domain through just a who is query, and I had my contact information there. So like in the middle of the day one day, he started blowing up my phone and like threatening me because I had his name on this page. So, <laughs> so there's just, there's a lot of people that got upset. And I decided I, I didn't really want to do it anymore. So towards the end, I was really backing away. It was the FBI. It was people that were, and, and you don't know. You don't know if people are threatening you because they're you're onto the truth and they've done it, or you don't know if if they're just an innocent person that doesn't want their name on the page. You know. And again, I was 16 years old, lived in a quiet suburban town. To me, this was like this was like a game. This was like a, a, a mystery novel, but it was real life. It was. I shouldn't have treated it like that. For a couple of weeks, I had just mostly been reading but not posting I just been ignoring a lot of the stuff that came through and then that log came through that post came through and it just it was too elaborate to have been faked and 
it was pasted a couple times. If you look at the way it's pasted, if you paste something on IRC, it like repastes the timestamp like twice. So you could tell that somebody was pasting an old log to somebody else. And I'm looking at it, and I don't recognize a lot of the people in the conversation. But when I showed it to Derek, he recognized one of the names, and I can't remember which of the names he recognized from way back whenever we'd started the whole thing. So I posted. I said, you know what? Let me let me post it. Maybe somebody else will see it, and and we'll get some. Um, We'll get some more hits on it because if somebody sees it, then maybe they can get, do a follow up with some additional information. And um, that was that was, I think, one of the last things that we ever posted to the site. We didn't conclude that it was him. You know, we left it open because we were still looking for more info. But long story short, that's why we posted it, and that's whenever we stopped. I think in hindsight, and especially towards the end of it, what we figured out was there was one initial hacker who kind of released everything to all of his friends. And then that from there it got spread. So the so the person that posted it to Usenet claims he got it from some other wear site. You know, I, I don't know if he directly or indirectly knew the um, the actual hacker. You know, I never I never got to talk to him. And you know, I, I hope he doesn't have any hard feelings against me. I I think you know we he was young as well, and he was obviously very brilliant. He saw a lock. He wanted to pick the lock. He. He picked it, and um, unfortunately, he got in trouble for it. You know, I could have uh, very easily been on the other side of that whenever I was younger. I could have been the one picking the lock, and I got really lucky that I didn't because I wouldn't be able to do what I do for a living now if I had. So, I don't remember anybody ever saying there's more, there's more stuff out there to get. I remember looking for it. I remember people sending me stuff that ended up being hoaxes. We had a lot of hoaxes. I probably ended up opening a couple of viruses, too, that I didn't realize it's at 16 years old either <laughs> but we had a lot of hoaxes so i, I kind of got to the point where you know i, I just kind of wanted to have flight i just wanted valve to release the game <laughs> you know at, at that time i just i think i just took gabe's um word as truth which was the reason it was delayed is because of a hacker and not necessarily because it was unfinished and, it, and that could very well be especially watching how half-life 3 never came out and how we were supposed to have like monthly episodes and we only got two <laughs> you know so i i don't doubt that um well you know th thinking about it from the perspective i have now i think it's pretty sloppy i think that if a company came out and did it now with the mindset that i have today i would think that's sloppy i wouldn't go broadcasting that it shows that your office is is you have a lot of internal problems i'm a small business owner and i help I work in the computer industry and I help customers mitigate issues like this if they have a, a hacking issue or a security issue. It's not all that I do, but it's one of the parts of the job. And the way that they handled the whole thing, asking their customers essentially to do their work for them, I would never advise a customer to do that. And I don't know who they have doing their computer security, but I, I think that's a really poor way to have a, um, a PR campaign. As for what I thought at 16 years old, I thought, you know, we got to help. We got to help this, these poor people. The how, how could this possibly happen? We have to, you know. But you're you're 16. You're like you're not. You don't know the world yet. I tell you, all I wanted, well, two things. I wanted Half Life 2 to come out at the time. And I wanted I wanted to get invited to Valve headquarters. Like, hey, you like, you found the hacker. <laughs> I mean, we put on the freaking forum, help us find the hacker, and you're the one. You you did it. So come come to our. Uh, headquarters up in Washington. But you, 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 I'm not saying they had to fly me there. I had to find my own plane ticket, but it's just been nice to been, hey, come on up. We'll, we'll give you, a, now it'd be like, hey, we'll give you a portal, portal gun or something. You know what I mean? Like some $10 trinket to, you get what I'm saying. I know that sounds silly and I'm not, I'm not trying to act like I'm entitled to anything because I'm not, but it was just would have been nice, I guess, you know? I almost wonder because they didn't really rule out the red carpet. They weren't they were kind of standoffish with me. I almost wonder if they, even after getting him, if they always suspected me of being like a, uh, a co-conspirator or a somehow, you know, nefarious intentions. Nobody could really know except, uh, I mean, by now I would, I'd claim some type of credit. <laughs> I'm sure there would, if there, I'm sure there, if there is a statute of limitations on that kind of thing, I'm sure it'd be up by now. But no, we were honestly just trying to get the game to come out. Yeah, and then I actually didn't have a computer. I told you some stuff actually happened right after that. So I didn't actually have a computer when it came out, and I did not get the game. I have to open up Steam 
and it would have been where is it? Game purchase 2005, 827. I missed the boat at first because if you don't have a computer that could run the game, what's the point, you know? And that seems surprising because of how involved I was in the leak. But I had some stuff that happened that, um, yeah. Um, basically, every time I'd start the game, I'd, I'd kind of think in the back of my head, you know, that, um, and this is, maybe this is kind of silly, but every time I'd start Half-Life 2, I'd wonder if any of the work that the Amazing Zemo and I did had anything to do with the game actually finally seeing the light of day. Uh, who knows for sure, but it, it was interesting to think about. It's like it's things on the internet. Whenever something goes viral, which is what our, our site did, everybody at the time knows everything that's going on because you're there, you're part of it. You're part of the global consciousness. But after but after time goes on, if you weren't there, it's like the information's just gone. Did I do the right thing um, for myself? Probably not. Did I do the right thing for the community? I hope so. I mean, I, I'd like to think that I did the right thing for the community. Um, for me personally, I think, again, I would have been better not getting involved. But it was a good life lesson to not get involved in things that aren't any of your business, you know?